All right, so degranulation. So what happens when neutrophils degranulate? They, re they release all these toxic chemicals. But not only are they the first responders, they also help to recruit other immune cells as well. So remember, macrophages are also patrolling your circulatory system and the tissues of your body as well. So neutrophils actually send out signals that help to recruit macrophages. Now then, so here we have some invading bacteria as well. So again, macrophages, so you know that anime I like to refer to, and by the way, we can't stream on Netflix because it just shows a black screen, and apparently you need to install some pretty sketchy software in order to actually stream Netflix, so I'll just refer to the episode number of that, Cells at Work. They're all in this made outfits, and it's kind of weird. I'm like, why does that happen? Well, the thing is that macrophages have um, membrane ruffles, but the thing about that is like, wait, the name means big eater, so in my opinion, Macrophages should look more like this, because why? Macrophages are big eaters. So macrophage, again, literally comes from Greek words that mean big eaters. So what should they do? They should actually eat something that's big, right? So they eat their surrounding pathogens and also they eat surrounding antigens as well. So say you have something like a viral product, particle, what will they do as well? Well, they'll also eat that. So again, macrophages, big eaters, they're eating all these things from the environment, not only cellular debris, but pathogens as well. So then you have something called dendritic cells as well. So dendron is a Greek root that means tree, so they have a lot of branches as you can see from here. So these are also phagocytes. So again, phagocytes just means any cell that eats. Macrophages are phagocytes, neutrophils are phagocytes, so are den dendritic cells. So what do they do? Well, their main thing is to sample the surroundings that they're in. So they can move around, but they're more like surveillance. So they're there to kind of detect, hey, what's the environment right now? What do we have floating around in our body and our tissues? So dendritic cells, so say the neutrophils come in and they destroy these pathogens and these pathogens like, are ruptured and they're releasing all these little parts of these pathogens into the environment. Well, here come the dendritic cells. Say the neutrophils are done, they've neutralized the pathogen we had. So then dendritic cells, what do they do? Again, dendron refers to trees and trees have branches. So they send out all these little cellular, like, Let's say like, um, I think it's called Philopodia, but yeah, they send all these branches out. So these are like extensions of their membrane, like limbs. So what do they do? Well, they sample the surroundings. So they actually take their surroundings in and all the proteins and chemicals and particles found in their environment, and they bring them in and they process them. All right, so immune surveillance. So we let's talk about that, but we'll get more to dendritic cells later on. So let's talk about immune surveillance. All right, so then we did briefly cover natural killer cells. So what are they? So again, they well, killer, so they kill something, but why are they natural? So again, they recognize abnormal cells such as virus infected cells, tumor cells, and they cause something called apoptosis or apoptosis. This is programmed cell death, so cell death on purpose. It's not due to some sort of random damage, like say a virus infects the cell, or say you burn yourself, or you slice yourself open, or a cell open. NK cells can tell other cells to die, but why do they tell them to die? Well, these are disease cells that can potentially spread that disease to other cells, so they're like really hardcore. They don't want to have any, they're like, extreme flattening the curve. They want to flatten the curve as much as possible by killing other cells. So be glad that we don't have a human equivalent of NK cells. All right, so how do they do this? Well, one thing they, an essential tool that these um, NK cell need are something called major histocompatibility complex class one receptors or MHC class one, or actually MH1 receptors. Actually it is MHC class one. So you have MHC, about abbreviated as MHC1, so all nucleated cells have MHC class 1 receptors. So the funny thing about this, this is kind of like your, how your cells kind of present their own ID, so they're saying like, hey, I'm actually part of this body, I'm supposed to be here. So it's kind of like if you go on campus, like when you go on campus now, then you have to show your ID to make sure that, hey, I actually have business there. So what happens if you don't have your ID? Well, security stops you, and if you're on campus, they'll kick you out. 
But in terms of NK cells, what do they do? Well, if your cells don't have the proper ID, then they kill them. So again, be glad your campus security don't act like NK cells in that aspect. So MHC1 receptors, these also serve as ID for your cells. So again, just like how everyone's student ID has the same background and same overall format, MHC1 receptors are kind of like that. They have the same general format. But it's dependent. So again, will a uh, Chaminade ID work at UH? Will HPU ID work at UH? Not really. So this is trying to tell your body, hey, these are part cells that are part of my body versus cells that are like transplanted or some sort of pathogenic cell. All right, so normal cells. So the funny thing is that they're always constant, constantly ex expressing or actually constantly displaying your its own protein. So they actually take their internal environment, put it on these MHC class 1 receptors, and then show these MHC class 1 receptors and their internal proteins to the environment the surrounding environment. So where do NK cells come in? Well the funny thing about MK or NK cells is that they kind of inspect this and I'm if you take an immunology I'm vastly oversimplifying this but again a lot of us haven't some of us haven't even had cell biology so again we're just talking about what they do in general. So this is very very surface level. So what's happening here? The NK cell is inspecting not only the MHC class 1 receptor that's displaying proteins from inside of this normal cell, but it's also inspecting the protein as well. So what does the NK cell do here? Well, it's just like a security guard stopping you and asking to check your ID and they're like, okay, everything's good. So if nothing is abnormal, if you have your ID, they won't freak out. Same with your NK cells. If you have your MHC class 1 receptors and they dis they're displaying normal proteins, they'll be like, okay, and go on their merry way. Cell stays norm normal cell stays intact. Now, say a cell gets infected by a pathogen, say a virus or a bacterium or something else. So here we have a, a, a virus. So what happens when the virus infects a cell? Well, again, it integrates itself inside the cell so remember, these MHC class 1 receptors also display internal proteins as well. But the funny thing about viruses, again, viruses, are they alive? Are they not alive? Well, the thing is that they need cells to reproduce. And how do they reproduce uh, using a cell? Well, they hijack the internal machinery and all the nutrients and everything the cell needs to survive. So they kind of co-opt it. Instead of having the cell maintain its normal function, a virus takes over the internal machinery of a cell. So the thing about when a virus takes over the internal machinery of a cell, it also takes over the protein production. So the thing about these MHC class 1 receptors is that they're also proteins. So if a cell is constantly making viral proteins, it's going to make less MHC class 1 protein overall. So infected cells, they actually lack MHC class 1 receptors. Why? Because again, now you're making all these viral proteins. So as a result, you can only make so much protein from one cell. So you're going to have a drop off in the other proteins in the cell. So you're going to get a lack of MHC class 1 receptors. So here comes the NK cell. So NK cell, what does it do? Well, it's like, OK, where's your MHC class 1 receptor? It thinks something is fishy. So again, if a cell has a lack of MHC class 1 receptors, NK cell is going to send something wrong. So it's like a security guard asking for an ID and you don't have your ID. Well, on campus, they'll just throw you out. But an NK cell, if it finds a normal cell without, or actually if it finds one of your cells that are infected and they don't have an MHC class 1 receptor, it's going to kill it. Because why? It suspects something is wrong with that cell, so it doesn't take any chances. So what's it going to do? It's going to kill that infected, potentially infected cell. And again, that apoptosis, that process of program cell death. So again, this NK cell is telling another cell to die. So again, it's not random death. The NK cell is actually doing it on purpose. Now remember, two big things that NK cells detect, viral infections and also tumors and cancer. So the thing about cancerous cells is that they can also they do ex display MHC class 1, they do have nuclei, they still produce proteins, but they also produce abnormal proteins. So the NK cell, they're like, okay, 
I see MHC class 1, I see normal proteins, but say they th say this is a special cancer protein. And again, I'm being very general, but the thing about NK cells, they can recognize abnormal proteins as well. So same someone on campus does have the correct ID, but they're acting really weird. Say they're yelling at other people, or they're throwing trash everywhere, or they're just having very strange behavior. Well, campus security will throw them out again, right? But again, NK cells are more hardcore than campus security, so they'll detect these strange abnormal proteins, and they don't take any chances. They're like, okay, this is cancer. This is weird. So they're like, okay, what the heck is this? This looks very fishy. So what do they do? Again, just like they kill the viral infected cells, NK cells also kill two cancerous or precancerous or even cancerous cells. So again, this is why immunity is also very important and tightly linked to cancer. If someone's taking drugs that suppress their immune system or someone has an immunodeficiency, they also have an increased risk of cancer. Why? NK cells are very important in getting rid of cancer before it becomes a full-blown metastatic tumor. All right, so again, MHC class 1 receptors, they also serve as ID for your cells. Again, MHC class 1, don't confuse them with MHCI. It's a Roman numeral 1. So disease cells display fewer MHC class 1 receptors. Again, if a cell is infected by a virus or it's diseased, it can't make its own MHC class 1 proteins as efficiently. That's why they display fewer receptors. And they also kill cells that lack MHC class 1s, except Remember, red blood cells, they eject their nucleus, and this always comes up every year, like, oh, but if they don't have a nucleus, how, and they don't have MHC class 1, how do they evade it? Well, actually, there's other receptors and other proteins that red blood cells express and tell NK cells to chill. But again, that's kind of beyond the scope of this class. Again, this is just 100 level right now. And they also kill cells with abnormal surface molecules. Again, these are these abnormal surface molecules. When you have a cancer cell, what typically causes cancer? Well, mutations in DNA, which causes mutations in RNA, which causes the production of abnormal proteins that are results of mutations. So again, if something is weird and the NK cell can detect that weird precancerous protein, it can kill cells that have that protein. Again, they're serve as ID. So again, this is why it's very important to understand these receptors. I know it's a big, complicated word, and I know a lot of you love receptors, but they're very important for immunity. All right, because why are they very important? So NK cells are also important in self-tolerance. So meaning that, again, NK cells, if they start attacking normal cells, Basically, all the normal cells in your body would start dying off, so that would be very, very bad for your health, right? So NK cells, so normal cells show their own proteins on their own receptors, and again, NK cells are there to kind of give them a free pass. So again, they check the protein, and they also check the receptor itself. But what happens, so again, pretend this NK cell is going through your body, inspecting the different various normal cells in your body. So let's say, okay, MHC class 1 is there, protein is there, but what if it encounters a cell that's not necessarily cancerous, but has a different type of MHC class 1? Remember, this NK cell was looking at this other type of MHC class 1, but now we have a different type of MHC class 1. So where might you get that example of that? Well, maybe someone got a tissue transplant from a donor. A donor, again, each of us has its own, we have our own set of MHC class 1, so it's kind of like your student ID. Your student ID is a combination of different numbers. Well, the thing about your MHC type, or, or what you call your human leukocyte antigen HLA type, you actually have multiple MHC class 1 receptors, and this kind of makes your own body's unique ID, or immune ID. So here we have someone with a different immune ID. So the NK cell is going to be like, okay, this is a weird, not foreign MHC class 1. I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm going to think, okay, this is a pathogen. I'm going to kill this foreign MHC class 1 expressing cell. So again, even though the cell is not cancerous, it's not infected. Just because it has a different MHC class 1, again, it's like someone trying to use a student ID from, say, University of California trying to walk around campus here. 
campus security is still going to kick them out. Same with your NK cells and foreign MHC class 1 receptors. So NK cells, again, this is more the hardcore. So again, remember, it's, I'm showing you very basic cartoons of this. So there are many other receptors and, hey, ligands as well. But again, it's important that your immune system does not attack, or it's important your immune system attacks pathogens. But it's also equally important that your immune system does not attack your own cells. Because again, you need your cells. You need your cells to live. Alright, so human leukocyte antigens, so again, you have many types of MHC class 1 receptors. So MHC class 1 and MHC class 2 receptors are like IDs for your own cells for your own immune system. So there's not just one MHC type of MHC class 1 and one type of MHC class 2. There's actually many, many types of them. So again, many, many variations. You don't have to know about exact numbers, but just know that it's kind of like rolling a dice, but your dice is like has a hundred sides or something, sometimes even thousands. So the HLA typing. So remember, if you just threw transplanted anybody, any donor cells into any patient willy nilly without anything else, remember those NK cells are going to detect those foreign MHC class one receptors and kill those cells. So HLA typing, it tries to match very, very similar. So it's kind of similar MHC class 1 and 2 receptors. So you have reduced the chances of a donor's tissue being rejected from a patient. So there, I will put, I think I posted the link to this in the slide.